Hello and welcome back to the channel. Brandon with Davidson Audio and today we are going to be filming a much requested video, a follow-up to our install series on the Indian Challengers and that's going to be our install on our single amp equipment installation of the fairing. We had a lot of customers asking, hey we want a specific video for the single amp audio package installed in the Indian Challengers which is for the 2020 to current Indian Challenger and the 22 to current Indian Pursuits. Same bike, just added a couple accessories. So what this video is gonna be is we have already ran the powering ground for this. We ran the speaker wires. All the wiring is in the fair. So what I wanted to do is take a moment to show you all how to install the DSP that we use in the fairing of the bike what connectors to use, how to put it in there, how to route the RCAs and everything, and also how to install the amplifier that we like to use here in the fairing. Because we did a couple of videos in the past of the dual amp install that we did back in Arizona. So as you remember, if you haven't seen that video, it's one of our very first videos that we did. Go on back and take give that video a view. We put an 800 watt amp here and an 800 watt amp up here. And then we have the DSP up here with distribution and everything. Um, and for the longest time, I was like, all right, we'll just leave that video. It's fairly close. The problem is that it is and it isn't. Um, there are differences. And I just wanted to take the time to really show you all how to install this on here. So that way, when you buy a package from us, you know where the equipment goes. You have a lot more confidence in it. And also, if you just want to watch the video and decide, yeah, I don't want to do all that work, you can still bring it to us. We'd be more than happy to put it in. So let's start by getting this DSP installed in the bike first. We'll get this connected up, the RCA is routed, and then we will worry about putting the amplifier in there, get that all installed, and then we'll clean all the wiring up and get this bike playing and delivered to this customer. All right, so we're gonna start by taking out your factory power unit. Obviously at this point, you can see we've already got our fairing shot. We've already got the whole back inner structure back together. Um, that's in a previous video, just go watch. We did two different versions of this video. Uh, showing you how to install this fairing shroud. So go back and watch that. But what we're gonna focus on right now is pushing this up out of the way, exposing our factory power unit here, which has a 20 pin and a six pin connector, which you're just gonna disconnect and move up out of the way. We'll be reusing one of those later. And you'll take this 10 millimeter bolt out, pull the power unit out, and that's where we're gonna house our DSP. All right, so like I said, 10 millimeter, just break this uh, bolt loose and get it out of here. Now you take your OEM power unit and set it aside because we won't need it anymore. Now we're gonna install our pre-setup DSP here. So it's gonna slide up just like this. Um, you've got your two spots here. You're gonna be using this side. Obviously you can see we've had this in and out a couple of times. You're gonna slide it up until your thread spots here. You can put the bolt in there, slide up as far as it'll go, lock it in. What I want to focus on first is the RCAs. If you look right here, you can see you got the two harnesses here. Where the RCAs on the DSP end up are like right about here. So what I like to do is take your RCAs and you fish them in between these two harnesses and bring them into the cavity. And now that you have all your RCAs here, it's kind of a game of working them together. You're gonna kind of just pull this harness up. Oh, we gotta pull our shroud down. We're just gonna slide our DSP up in here if I can find. Just like that. And then like I said, We've got our threaded hole there. We're gonna put our bolt in there. We're gonna go ahead and get this lined up. And we're just gonna thread this in here. Like I said, you can see it's slotted, elongated. So we're gonna push it up as far as we can and get that torque down. So that, again, 10 millimeter. Just give it a good old tighten down. Take your fairing shroud, pull it down now. I just like to pull it over, make sure it's covering up everything but if you have to tuck it just a little bit to keep it out of this air duct um, do what you got to do and now what we got to do is we got to move our harness back down here because 
We're not gonna be using these two connectors. Um, this three pin is for the OEM driving lights. This six pin is for the OEM tour pack wire or audio wiring. This is the 20 pin we're worried about. Um, you can tell it's got the gray and the whites, gray and whites. You're gonna take this side and our harness has gray and white. You're gonna plug it in. That's the one part that we need for this side. Um, we're just going to set it over here. Once we get everything in here, we'll tuck it up all nice and neat. Now we've got to go over to the clutch side to get the RCA's rotted in this amplifier installed. So now we're going to take and install our 800 watt amplifier over here. What I like to do first is take our four channels of RCA's here. And if you look right here, you got this front harness and you have this back harness here. I like to route my RCA's behind this harness and up here we're gonna bring them back around, plug them into the amplifier and slide it up in there. So just nice and easy. Bring them around just like that. And I'm not gonna get into super big details of which one plugs into where, because this is gonna kind of be specific to what audio system you get. Um, and we will send you that information with the kit. So with these RCAs here, I just like to as I'm pushing the amplifier up in here, I'll pull on them just a little bit to get the majority of the slack up. But then from here, you just gotta pull on your fairing shroud and walk the amplifier up here. So once you get the amplifier slid up in there, sometimes you just gotta wiggle it just a little bit because of how tight of the tolerance this is. Um, then you're gonna take your 10 millimeter. Again, you're gonna tighten this in here. Try to get it all the way down to the bottom that you can, which means the amplifier is forced back as far as it will go. What we're gonna do, I like to do, is we're gonna take our RCAs here. Um, you can use a zip tie. Um, I'm going to use some Tessa tape. It's a fabric tape. I'm gonna put a band right around here. And then we're gonna take these and we're gonna tuck them up in the backbone. Nothing crazy here. You still wanna make sure these aren't too sharp of a bend or anything. But if you can see right back here, um, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it in the video very well. You're going to see all the way back here, there's that empty cavity. All we're simply going to do is take these RCAs and fold them back up and just kind of push them up into here. You're not going to cram them up here. Um, just kind of get them up and out of the way. That way, when we bring all the other connections in here, the RCAs are up out of the way. And if you kind of put them in the left cavity, you can almost just bend them up out of the way. That way they're nice, out of the way, secure and as they say, out of sight, out of mind. Now we are going to turn our attention to the power and ground and all these speaker wire connections. The most important thing to realize here is you wanna work from the ground side back because we wanna bring the wires in here. I bring them in behind this wiring harness along the front of the amplifier and land them in here and keep them really tight and zip tie all the way along that way we get them really tight. It helps clearance behind the turn signal and just gets us a very tight, clean um, installation all the way through. So we're gonna grab the Allen screw or Allen for this. And one thing to help make it a little easier is we're probably gonna loosen up the uh, fairing tray so we can tilt this up out of our way to get uh, a little bit more room for a T handle in here. So let's do that and then we're gonna get everything landed. Now it's time to get the power in ground and remote wire landed. Like I said, I like to start from the furthest out to the inside. So it's gonna be ground, remote, and positive. And then you've got, you know, channel four, three, two, and one. It's gonna alternate positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way down. It's all nicely labeled here if you wanna get a close up right there. You can see where everything's nice labeled there. So just make sure you really, really pay attention. I cannot stress this enough. When you go to land the power and ground, read it once and double check it each time because if you swap these two, it's a super easy way to fry these amplifiers. Right, so before we snake these in here, um, one thing Bill just reminded me of is make sure 100% your fuse has not been put in yet. The fuse is the absolute last thing you do once this amplifier is completely landed. I mean, ground, remote, positive, all the speaker wires, everything's nice, zip tied and tied up and you are ready to play the system, that's when you put the fuse in. So again, installing the fuse is the absolute last thing to do. So what I like to do here is this harness here, I like to bring the power and ground behind it.
just like this. And then the same thing with the remote, you'll notice that it will kind of pull the harness back a little bit, but it's fine. Um, and the reason I like to do this is because when we land all these in zip time real tight, this harness helps keep them up and back. So that way we can make sure we get all the clearance we can for the turn signals because it's extremely tight here. We stuffed everything we could in this fairing. So I want to make sure it's up out of the way. So let's rotate these like that. Land the ground first and then you'll just watch us land the rest of them. So this is where I always try to harp with everybody, the wire management part of it. And it's best to show you like this. Um, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna take the zip ties, we're gonna bring them down from the back forward. Um, you can really do this how you would like. It's just, this is what I like to do. And I'm doing them loose now, because in a second, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna tighten them all up. So we're gonna take these and we're gonna be pretty much bending them right on back. So just like this, um, the adhesive line shrink tube does make this a little difficult at times. Um, and if you see a little bit of wire exposed here, that's fine. Um, it's not gonna cause a problem. But the biggest thing is I like to do is just make it nice and tight, just like this. So let's get the zip tie rotated around. And we'll push this zip tie up as far as we can get it. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll throw one there and then we'll put one right about here where the rest of the wires are going to start meeting it. So let's get a close up right here so you can see. I like to try to set these up on top of the amp plate just like this. Um, push them up in here. Once we get the rest of the wires in here, it'll all kind of work together to uh, pull it tighter and straight. Like I said, if the shrink tube comes off this a little bit, it's fine. So this is the biggest thing I just like to make sure is that um, these are nice and tight in here like this. I've seen people with them where they route them all down and all over the place, it ends up causing an issue. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get into this. We're gonna finish landing the rest of the wires. So you're gonna have channel four, three, two, and one. So channel four, is the uh, rear right, which is usually gonna be red and black. Channel three is gonna be the back left, which is your clutch side, so green. And then you're gonna have here, channel two is gonna be the front right, which is red and black with gray. And then the front left is gonna be channel one, which is white with the white shrink. So we're just gonna go ahead and get into this, get this all wired up and show you what it looks like when it's done.
And I just want to reiterate, the biggest thing is double checking everything. So you really want to make sure, like I said, you have the ground, remote, power, you got positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Make sure everything's connected where it needs to be. All the connections are, are nice and tight. And this is where I really wanted to show, you know, zip tying them up really tight and neat because this gives us the max amount of room to make sure our fairing goes on straight and everything. And then again, we went up behind this harness because it acts as a good way to keep it up out of the way. And then you can see any slack wire here is nice S down and over. So that gives us some slack just in case we need it, which in this application we won't. So in reality, we could throw one more zip tie right here to keep this bundle together and up out of the way but usually i just like to leave it there um actually no we are going to put one zip tie so now that that's all done we take our fairing shroud and again just tuck it down over i would just like to take this little piece and you know just put it up over here um and then this is where we're going to make our final connection this right here it's going to go down it's going to plug into our harness and again the easiest way to identify make sure you got the harness plugged in the right way is greens and violets, greens and violets. Um, and then we will be good to go on this one. Um, so here, all you're gonna wanna do left is just you know tuck them up out of the way. Usually I've got away with tucking this one up here. Similar thing with this one up here, and you can usually throw some zip ties on some of this to keep it up nice and tight. The biggest thing you wanna do is just keep it up out of the way. You don't want anything dangling like this right here, won't work everything crushes it so what we'll do is i'll get this all zip tied up and get everything done here and then we'll show you what it looks like all done and ready to be put back on all right so like i said off camera we zip tied all this up made it nice and neat and again this is going to apply if you don't have the driving light module because that would be up here um, with this setup you should be able to put it back here there's enough room back here for the driving light module up here and all of that jazz but at least this one has gps so let's start from over here if uh, Bill can get up closer. You're going to see we routed our speaker wire up underneath this, around, and all these harnesses. Put our GPS module up here. We snuck the GPS wire up between this and this bulky harness here. Um, as long as this is back like this, it'll give you room for the two little tabs, the tabs that hold the fairing on. Um, and then we snake the harnesses here. This module, we trimmed the plastic off of here so we could... Uh, orient it this way and one thing i want to show you here is we take the harnesses and we bend them back and we take the slack back here and we make sure that we give it enough room because one thing you have to make sure is that in this part of the install you want to make sure that you have room for your windshield motor so you want to make sure that none of your harnesses are hitting this none of them are dragging it and you bring it up and you check our harness we relocated here make sure everything has clearance which we are 100% good right there. So we're gonna pop this back up, shut the bike off, and then that takes us over to this side. Same situation, we put our um, GPS module here, or the antenna part, routed our speaker wire nice and neat here. On this one, we took this, which is a Jeep, or, um, driving light module. We just ran a zip tie through the, the tray to get this nice and clean, make sure everything was up out of the way. Now on the bottom side of the brake side here, you can see we did the same thing. We zip tied the harness up out of the way to make sure it's tucked out of the way. Our extra connectors are down here in the neck. You know, wiring harness is here. Same thing over here. We just try to keep everything up nice and clean and up out of the way. And the only three connectors you should have left are your turn signal, your headlight, and your other turn signal. And then just tuck everything up out of the way. Like I said, just make sure You've got ample room here, so now we can get our fairing on, and this job is done. Um, the last thing I want to reiterate here is just make sure that this isn't covering these bolt holes up because that's where the headlight bolts go through, and I have had that happen. It's really annoying when you've already got the fairing on, and those are the last bolts. Um, so just make sure you're not covering these up. Tuck this up however you can. Get it up out of the way and make sure you're nice and clear here. So, All right, so that's it for this video. I wanted to take an opportunity to show you all how to install this because I know a lot of people have been asking. This has been a very requested video for a lot of people that have our packages. So feel at ease if you've bought a single amp package, 
this is how you install everything in the fairing. Um, I hope there's enough detail in here that you get a good enough angle with the lighting and everything in here to make sure that we really show you how this is done so that way you have more confidence to do it yourself. And if you don't wanna do it yourself, you can bring it down to us or other local shops that have um, experience with the Indians um, and help you get it done right. So with that, I just wanna say thank you again for watching. Feel free to get a hold of us at our phone number, which is 607-800-1032, or shoot us an email at brandon at davidson-audio.com, or come on down and see us here in Panama City, Florida. Address is 1901 West 15th Street here in Panama City, Florida. So again, Brandon with Davidson Audio, and I'm out.